Hello, so now we've got our question document set up and looking exactly how we want, I think we can start talking about how to create specific types of questions. And before long, I think you're gonna sort of come across questions where you might wanna add an image. Perhaps that might be a figure, or perhaps that might be an actual graph, okay? So as an example, let's uh, come down here to the last question and let's just put a new page in. And let's create a question which has a couple of different parabolas in. So let's go question, let's make it five marks. And let's actually have a question like this. So this question will basically be two different parabolas, one which is negative x squared plus five x minus two, and one which is two x squared minus seven x plus seven. And we'll effectively ask students to find the area of the shaded region. Okay, so if we come here, this is our question, and we want a figure underneath which actually has these two graphs on here, so these two parabolas on here. So one way that you can do that is by coming to something like GeoGebra, or perhaps you might like Desmos or some other graphing software. I'll just go GeoGebra Classic, okay? And I'm just gonna type over here on the left-hand side my two parabolas that I want. So I want negative x squared uh, plus five x minus two. If I click enter, then that appears over here. Um, then if I click my next graph, so let's try two x squared, uh, what would it be? Two x squared minus seven x plus seven. So those are my two parabolas that I want. Okay, first things first, you notice that by default, um, GeoGebra will label them F and G. I don't want that, so I'll just come over here, I'll right click and uncheck show label, okay? Purely because I haven't called them F and G in my question, I don't want to confuse a few students. Now I want to find the intersection point. So if I click up here at my point, and if I just click where these two graphs intersect, then by default, uh, LaTeX, oh sorry, not LaTeX, GeoGebra will automatically find those intersection points for me. Again, I wanna turn off those uh, labels because I don't wanna confuse students. And let's suppose now I wanna actually shade this area in. So if I go integral between, yeah, that will be fine. Uh, I wanna do the integral between F and G, and I wanna use the start point of X. Oops, let's do that again. So I go integral between, Okay, I want to use the start, I want to use f and g, and I want to use the start point of my domain as the x coordinate of a, and the end point of my domain as the x coordinate of b. Now if I click enter, that gets shaded. Again, I'll turn the label off. Okay, now one thing I'm gonna do now is shift and click all of these. Okay, so shift and click all of these on the left hand side, as you can see, and I'm gonna go right click and click settings. And I'm gonna turn all of this to black because I don't actually want it to be all these funky colors going on here for my exam, okay? Uh, and actually, I'm just gonna click on this area down here, and I'm just gonna change the opacity. So something like that would be fine. Okay, now I'm gonna just take a screen sh screenshot, so I'll just do this very quickly. Okay, so that's me taking a screenshot there. And if I now come into something like, um, into something like PowerPoint, Okay, so there we go. And if I right click, sorry, if I control V, then the image will be brought up there. Now actually I just wanna trim this slightly, so I'll just right click and I'll click crop. And I'll just crop this in ever so slightly, like so. So it fits the image a little bit better. Okay, now I wanna save this as an image. So I'll just right click on here and I'll go save as picture. Okay, now um, you see down here at the moment it's on PNG. Just please make sure it is on PNG and not something like GIF or JPEG or TIFF. Um, reason being is because LaTeX really only likes PDF or PNGs as images, okay? Now I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it Example Graph, okay? And just make sure as well that when you give it a name, make sure it doesn't have any space in between. So make sure there's no spaces in your name at all. That's otherwise LaTeX won't read that properly. So yes, I do want to overwrite. Okay, now I can come back to LaTeX and I can upload my image. Okay, so I'm just going to drag my image across like so. Okay, and now it's over here. So just quickly check. Yep, that's what I want to install. Okay, it's not amazing quality. That's just because it's a PNG, but I think it will do for the, for the purposes of the exam. Now, if I come down here to underneath my question, uh, first of all, I want to put it in the center of the page. So I'll begin and end center. Okay, and then I want to include my graphics. So backslash include graphics. Okay, now you notice that in the square brackets that come first, that's how I define the size of my image. So I think in this case, probably 50% of my text width will be fine. And I might want to change that um, once it's appeared and I can sort of fiddle around with the sizing. Then I want to type the name of my image. So example graph, like so. Okay, now if I recompile, you'll have this question and then underneath will be the image which I've just created. Okay, so that is one way of creating images in LaTeX. And in fact, actually 
if I wanted to change this now, so if I wanted to put my image first and then my question underneath, which sometimes happens, you know, perhaps you might want to show the image first and then have your question underneath. It's not quite as simple as just copying and pasting to the right place. So for example, if I just copy and paste my image to underneath my question and then the actual text for my question comes underneath that, if I recompile, what will basically happen is that question number will come down here next to the graph. So you see here that question four, instead of it being in the right place up here on the left hand side, it's actually come down here next to my graph. Simple ways to change that. If you type on the question line, okay, so where it says question and the number of points, if you type backslash h fill, what that will basically do is fill the rest of that line with horizontal space and it means that the question number will appear in the right place. Okay, so like so. It does mean that you'll basically get a blank line with um, sort of empty space on there, but I think that's a happy compromise to get the question number in the right place. The question number's in the right place, get the image first, then you get your question, okay? So that's just one simple way of importing um, pictures or graphics into your exam document.